simplifying exponential equation. So we're going to use our property of integers. That's why on Dreambox, some of you, I keep telling you to do the integers, because we're still add, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing with our integers. So the zero property yesterday, we talked about this. Any non-zero expression to the zero power is always going to equal 1. Anything to the zero power equals 1. That's one of our first rules. The negative exponent, any term to a negative exponent means to take the reciprocal of that term and then make it a positive power. So they give you some examples here, a to the negative n. If that's just that, we could put it, please write it just over 1. So when you think of that, the reciprocal is 1 over a to the n. Here, 1 over a to the negative n is going to become a to the n. And if you wanted to put that over 1, you could, or you could just leave it as a to the n. What does that mean when we actually have an exponent? 2 to the negative 3, 1 over 2 to the third. And at this point, if I asked you to leave it as a power, you could. But now you might go, oh, 2 to the third, that is 1 and 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. Here, 1 over 2 to the negative 4, 2 to the 4. So on your calculator, you also have um, a key that is, if you are looking at your calculator, it's this, um, for some of you, it's x to the negative 1. So I want you to find your x to the negative 1, or let's see on my calculator, 1. I want you to put in... 2, and then hit that key. If it's 1 over x or x to the negative 1, what'd you get? 0 0.5. 0 0.5. Oh, what does mine say up here on the Reciprocal of 2. This 1 over x, that means reciprocal. x to the negative 1 means reciprocal. So now you have 0.5 on your calculator. Hit that button again. Should give us 2, right? Finding the reciprocal of the reciprocal of 2. Please put in 0.25 on your calculator and hit that button, 1 over x. Um, four. We got 4. The reciprocal of 0.25, 1 fourth is 4. So this is kind of an important key on your calculator, and it all goes back to that exponent rule. Okay. So as you are looking at this one, um, we are going to not look at this video right now. Um, but it talks about if we have a negative base to an even power. So I just want you to write out up here negative 2 to the fourth power. That means, Olivia, how many negative 2s do I need? Four of them. Everyone should be writing this. So we're going to put negative 2, negative 2. If I multiply an even number of negatives, Positive or negative? Positive. Positive. If I have an even number of negatives and I multiply, it will always be positive. Negative 2 times 2 is 4, another 4. This would have been 16. It's positive. If I have a negative base, negative 2, and you have a parenthesis, so you have to have the grouping symbol. That makes a huge difference. Okay? And I have this to the third. That means I am taking three negative twos times itself. As I do that, negative two times negative two is four times another negative two. This would be a negative eight. So if you have a negative base to an odd power, we are going to be looking at that answer always being negative. Now, there's some places where you get where this negative 2 to the 4th looks a little different. And it looks something like this. I need you to quit talking. So when we are looking and we don't have this parenthesis, so back here, please write negative 2 without a parenthesis to the 4th. This is a different answer. These two will not be the same. Some, someone will tell me when they put them in their calculator that they're exactly the same as sums, and they are not. This negative out in front is telling us to take the opposite, please write that down, of 2 to the 4th. So it really means that when we look at that problem, we actually have like a negative 1 times 2 to the 4th. Someone said, but there's not a negative 1 there, it's negative 2. 
Two is raised to the power, so that's like the opposite of that. Two to the fourth is 16. This one comes out to be a negative 16. You need to be very careful in your homework if there's a parenthesis or not. If there's no parenthesis, a lot of times your answer will be negative, kind of like the if it's an odd power. So we're looking at the problems down below, and we start off and we have negative 1 to the 15. Our answer should be negative 1. Not 15, right? We're not taking 1 times 15 or negative 1 times 15. It's not negative 15. This means I'm going to have 15, right? 15 negative 1. That's what it means. So all of these negative ones, I'm not going to write them out. That's going to be negative 1. It's an odd number. My answer is going to be negative, and it was a pretty easy number. So as I am taking a look, as I look at this one, we are going to think of this as the opposite, okay? Which means negative 1 times 4 to the second. The opposite of 4 to the second. 4 to the second, Patrick, is? 16, our answer here is going to be negative 16. Caitlin, I have negative 10 to the third. That means I am going to be multiplying three negative 10s. Will my answer be positive or negative? Negative. negative and your jad a negative what? Negative 1,000. If you're struggling when you have 10 to a power, this power tells you how many zeros are there. And then if it's an odd, it should stay negative. If it was even, it would be positive. As you take a look at this next page, we are going to be simplifying. So as we start off knowing I have x to the negative 9, we're going to put that over 1. Any of these, especially when they have um, negative exponents, we're going to put them over 1. So as we start looking at this one, Nolan, what do I need to do to simplify x to the negative 9? Mm -hmm. So we're going to put the, take the, what word would that be? It starts with an R. The reciprocal. So when I take that reciprocal, I'm going to have 1 over X. And it's now 9. Okay. Good, and I'm looking at the next one. 4, I'm looking at the next one. And I want to do each part separately. So I want to start with the 4 in my fraction as I'm looking at this one. I'm going to do this one down here. So should I move the 4? Uh, yes. As what is my exponent? Uh, Wait, isn't that with the C? Oh. Ah, so what am I doing with the 4? Keeping it there. Okay. So now, Levi, when I look at the C, what should I be doing? C to the third in our denominator. Does that make sense? Okay. As I'm looking at the next one, as I look at that map, what am I doing with the B? Keeping it on the top. This is my answer for that problem. I have no negative exponents, and I don't have the same letter as either on the top or the bottom, or both on the top or bottom. So I'm looking at this next one, right? If I look at the next one, Wyatt, how am I going to be simplifying? Could I do anything with the 2? No. no. How about the A? Okay, so it was A to the negative 3. Negative 3A. What does the negative tell us to do? Reciprocal. So that is in the denominator, right? So if it's on the bottom, what do we have to do? And it will now become a to the a what? Positive 3. Okay. Would I have to have this over 1? If some of you, you want to keep it that way, that's no problem. But could you just write this answer as 2a to the 3rd for our answer? Yes. Okay. We're looking at that next one, Joe. As we are looking at that next one, how are we simplifying? If we are looking at that, what am I doing with the M? Do I keep it or move it? Okay, so I'm going to put N to the fifth. What do I put on top? 
M to move the move the M up. Because it's negative. It is positive. But do I move it up to the top? Which ones do we move? Only, only, only negative exponents. So like here, we didn't move the four. And I want you to think about this problem this way. I want you to write this right behind here. This is really n to the negative five over one times one over m to the second. So when I said, what should I put in the numerator, Joe, I was really looking for, if we do the reciprocal of this, it should be a one here, right? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So Sam, we are looking n to the negative five, that became one over n to the fifth. What am I doing with one over m to the second? Should we move the m, as Joe was saying, to the top? No, I don't think so either. Keep it on the bottom, right? It's times, this is still going to be times 1 over m to the second. You are never moving positive exponents. So my answer is 1 over n to the fifth, m to the second. And I saw quite a few of you make an erasing marks when you move the m to the second to the top. Remember, you can always write this whole fraction as two separate fractions n to the negative 5 over 1 and 1 over m to the second. There's a way for people. 1 on top, 3 to the second, and what do I do with the n? Leave it on the bottom. 3 to the second n. Could I rewrite this if I wanted as 1 over 9n? I would take both answers. Okay? A lot of times when they say simplify, if I don't tell you to leave it as a power, you if it's a simple one, you'd want to multiply that. Going across from there, as we are taking a look at that one, um, what would I be looking at, um, Ashley? X to the negative 2 on the bottom, I like that. Yep. When it was negative 2, she moved it down. So should I move the y at all? Keep it exactly as it is, right? Okay. Cameron, are you ready to start us on that bottom one here? What should I do with the 6? Should I move it? 6 stays on the top. Luden, how about the A? A goes on the bottom. Do I have to put a 1? No. Okay. Dan, if I am looking at the C, goes down, so it becomes C what? C to the third. And this is just one, right? So one times all of that is just the same thing. So 6A, C to the third. Could you put a one out in front of that if you wanted to? Sure. I would never mark that wrong as we are looking at that one. Okay. As I am looking to share at this next one, tell me how to start it. With the 2. Put it down. 2 to the what? Third. 2 to the 3rd. Kendall, what am I doing with the x? Keep in the same spot, right? Rowan, what am I doing with the z? Putting it down to the denominator. z to what power? What's that? To the 7. Now, I would take this as an answer, but 2 times 2 times 2, 2 to the 3rd is 8, z to the 7th, over x to the 2nd. I would take that answer also. Okay, is that making sense? Yeah. So, as you are looking at those solutions, the last page that you are doing in your notes that we are looking at is this one. So, if I am reading the problem, Olivia, would you do me a favor and read it? So H is our hours, okay? So we're going to keep track that this is our hours after they started measuring, okay? So the question is, you have your calculators hopefully still, 1,000 1, times 2 to the second. That really means 1,000 times 4, right? What'd you get? 
calculator. You get 4,000, right? So, you probably didn't need a calculator. So, 4,000, what does it mean? It means that there are 4,000 bacteria after two hours. Okay? So, that's how quickly that bacteria is growing by doubling, right? What does zero mean? So, write the problem out. So, you're going to write out 1,000 times 2 to the zero. Well, what's anything to the zero? Is this equal to 1,000 or equal to 1? 1,000, it's times 1, right? So, when I think of 1,000 times 1, my answer is going to be 1,000. And what does it mean? It means how much bacteria when they started measuring. This is right at time zero, okay? This last one, what do you think the negative three means? Reciprocal. It does mean reciprocal, but in this case, what would the negative three mean in terms of hours? Like three hours before, right? So when we look at this answer, please put this in your calculator. 1,000 times two to the negative three, and I agree it does mean 1,000, times 1 over 2 to the third, which is 1,000 times 1 eighth. And when you put it in your calculator, 1,000 times 2 to the negative 3, did you get 125? Okay. So 125, three hours before that was our population.